of the uh, Minnesota Senate uh, Committee on Higher Education is now in session. Uh, folks, we have one uh, order of business today, and that's Senate File 5326, uh, Senate Fata's um, uh, omnibus uh, budget bill. Uh, so uh, the bill's path is, uh, first we're going to actually adopt the A4 Delete Everything Authors Amendment, and then we'll have counsel give us a walkthrough of the bill as amended by the A4 Delete Everything Amendment. Then we'll hear testimony, and after that we'll take up amendments and discuss the bill. Uh, we will be sending this bill on to the Committee on Finance. Uh, so Senator Fate moves the A4 Authors Amendment to get the bill in the shape you'd like it to be in. Uh, all in favor, say aye. Opposed? <laughs> the amendment is adopted. Uh, <laughs> it's going to be a fun one today. It's going to be a fun one today. Um, uh, if we could, uh, uh, Mr. Olofsson, if you would uh, like to walk through the financial considerations in the bill for us, please. Yes. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Members of the committee, in your packets, you should have a one-page spreadsheet. In the top left corner, it says Higher Education Committee-2024 Senate Position SF5236 A4DE amended, Amendment as amended by the A5 Amendment. So just to give you all a brief overview, uh, the Higher Education Committee received a target of one-time money of $500,000 in FY25, and the bill in front of you meets that target. Uh, but it also assumes that the A5 amendment that's also in your packets will be adopted, uh, the spreadsheet in front of you. So beginning, uh, uh, we will focus on columns F through K um, today. That's the Senate position in the bill in front of you. So beginning with the Office of Higher Education, on line seven, this is for the ALS research grant cancellation. This comes from the governor's budget bill with slightly new language um, that just works better to make the funds available through FY29. Initially, the funds were only available through fiscal year 2026. So line seven cancels 19.6 million from the general fund for the ALS appropriation in FY24. And line eight reappropriates the money for the same purpose for ALS research available through fiscal year 2029. Um, moving on, lines nine and 10 uh, come from the A5 amendment that will be discussed later, um, but line nine uh, reduces the transfer to the North Star Promise account in the Special Revenue Fund by $5.04 million from the General Fund, and line 10 uh, increases uh, the appropriation to the Fostering Independence Grants, or FIG, by that corresponding $5.04 million. Uh, so for a total general fund uh, sh change of $0, since both of those uh, shifts cancel each other out. Uh, for the $500,000 on line 15, this is with the Minnesota State uh, System. Uh, this comes from Senator Kupek's bill, Senate File 3806. Uh, that we discussed earlier this week uh, for the Kids on Campus initiative. This is to support Head Start programs on college campuses. This is $500,000 one time from the general fund in fiscal year 25. Uh, reg relating to the University of Minnesota, this is on line 19. This doesn't, uh, this relates to the Centric Care appropriation that we appropriated 10 million to last year that's available through fiscal year 2027. This doesn't add or reduce any of the funds for that. It just expands and modifies that appropriation uh, so that the university and Centric Care can use those funds uh, as they intend to. Um, so moving on down, um, just to summarize, uh, on line 29, you can see, again, that $500,000 one-time spending from the general fund to Minnesota State. And with that $500,000, uh, this bill in front of you meets that, uh, the one-time target. Relating to non-general fund revenue, there's, uh, this comes from Section 2 of Article 2 of the DE Amendment. Uh, this is a governor's recommendation from Senate File 5326. Uh, this is just if... Uh, for multiple revisions and licensure and registration applications, um, this is there would be a new uh, fine, I believe, of tw of six hundred dollars, uh, and that would bring in twenty one thousand dollars ongoing um, to the special revenue uh, to the account in the special revenue fund. Uh, so that's uh, governor's recommendation. And with that, that ends my walkthrough. I'd be happy to answer any questions. 
Thank you, Mr. Austin. Uh, Ms. White, if you would, please. Uh, Mr. Chair and members, I'm going to go through the A4DE amendment. Uh, Eric went through Article 1, the higher ed appropriations. Article 2, Section 1 establishes a new section of law related to the consideration of criminal records when applying to a higher ed institution. That's from Senator Uma Verbaten, Senate File 4269. Section 2 and Sections 4 and 5 are from Senate File 5326. Um, they allow the Office of Higher Education to charge additional fees for an initial application and a renewal registration that require multiple revisions. And those three sections amend the uh, Minnesota Private and Out-of-State Public Post-Secondary Education Act and the Private Career Schools Section of Law. Section 3 requires the Commissioner of Corrections to collect information on incarcerated persons who have self-identified as federal student aid borrowers and relay that information to the Commissioner of Higher Education. And the Commissioner of Corrections, in consultation with the Commissioner of Higher Education, is required to develop a plan by December 1st, 2024, to assist the incarcerated persons in enrolling in a federal income-driven repayment plan, and that's also from Senator Uma Verbaten's Senate File 4269. Section 6 prohibits the Commissioner of Corrections from establishing a prison education partnership with a higher education institution, with higher education institutions that are organized as private for-profit institutions or charge incarcerated persons a higher per credit rate uh, than the rate for non-incarcerated students. That's from Senate File 4269 also. Uh, section 7, actually Section 7 and 8 are also from Senate File 4269. Section 7 provides that if the Commissioner of Corrections requires a person on supervised release to work or be employed, enrollment and participation in post-secondary education satisfies that requirement. And Section 8 repeals two statutes that are under um, the jurisdiction of the Commissioner of Corrections. And that completes Article 2. Thank you very much, Ms. White. Members, any questions for Ms. White or Mr. Ellison? Uh, we have one testifier uh, on the schedule today, um, Ziguan Frazier. Could please um, state your full name for the record and commence your testimony when you're ready, please. Um, Chair and members of the committee, thank you for allowing me to speak before you today. My name is Iguan Fraser. I am the policy and advocacy manager with Foster Advocates. Um, I'm grateful to be here today with much different messaging than what you've heard from myself and our community. Today are words of celebration and deep gratitude. First, thank you for creating space to hear from our amazing testifiers, Ace, Nee, and Travis. You heard from them the harsh realities fosters face and the beauty that the Fostering Independence Grant has created amongst difficult circumstances. Not only did you listen and create space, but you worked swiftly and diligently to identify a solution, even when it felt like an impossible task. Our team and community were overwhelmed by the support of so many. Additionally, I have to extend gratitude to Senator, Senator Fateh, Senator Rarick, and Sam. From our very first conversation, you named this as a top priority and worked hard to ensure the state made good on its promise. We know that this is not only about access to higher education. Because of your actions, stomachs will continue to be full, fosters will maintain their housing, hope will continue to be alive in our state. This is an interim fix. There's more work to be done to ensure FIG continues to be sustainable and continues to be a model at the national level. We look forward to ongoing collaboration and partnership in creating a solid solution. Today, though, is a win. In closing, as a foster, I extend deep appreciation to each of you for upholding this promise and commitment to fosters in our state. The dread so many fosters were facing has been alleviated with sweet, sweet relief. I hope you feel and know what this, I hope you feel and know that this reverberates through a community that doesn't get many wins. This happened because you listened and our testimony did not fall on deaf ears, but those who cared. Thank you. Thank you much, Ms. Frazier. Members, any questions or comments on the testimony? Thank you again, Ms. Frazier. Thank you. 
Uh, now we can discuss uh, amendments to the bill. Um, Senator Fate has the A5 amendment to the amendment. Senator Fate, to your amendment. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chair. Um, this is something that was discussed earlier on, um, and Ms. Frazier just touched on it right now. It transfers $5 million or $5.04 million from uh, the North Star Promise to the Fostering Independent Grants Program or the FIG Program. Um, I want to say thank you so much to um, Sam, Senator Rarick, Ohi, and the Foster Advocates for uh, coming together to get this to uh, get this done. So, thank you, Mr. Chair. Thanks much, Chair Fate. Members, any questions or comments uh, to the A5 amendment? <coughs> Seeing none, all in favor, say aye. aye. Opposed? <laughs> the amendment to the amendment is adopted. Uh, Senator Fate, you have the A6 amendment as well. Uh, yes, Mr. Chair, thank you so much. Um, this one's also pretty straightforward. It increases the Minnesota Higher Ed Facilities Authority bonding limit from $1.3 billion to $2 billion. So um, I ask for your support, or at least the majority of you. <laughs> Members, any questions or comments to Senator Fate on the A6 amendment? Seeing none, Senator Fate moves the uh, A6 amendment. All in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed? The A6 amendment is adopted. This is going incredibly well. Uh, <laughs> despite the chair. Uh, Senator Fate, as long as you're there, uh, I understand you also have the A11 amendment to the amendment. Yeah, Mr. Chair, just a technical amendment to get the bill into the way we like it, so. I'm sorry, Senator Fate. So, did you describe the amendment, uh, the A11 amendment? Um, the A11 is just a technical amendment. Okay. Members, any uh, questions for Senator Fate? Uh, Senator Fate moves the A11 amendment to the amendment. All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? The A11 amendment to the amendment is adopted. Members, do we have other amendments? Um, I guess I am going to offer the A8 amendment. Um, uh, for Senator Kupek, who is unfortunately not here, it makes some clarifying. Um, okay. Uh, this amendment will clarify how uh, language can be used for the Head Start grants. Um, members, uh, I believe you all have the, a copy of the A8 amendment in front of you. Um, do you have any questions about the A8 amendment? Thank you. <laughs> uh, members, I move the uh, A and amendment to the amendment. All in favor say aye. aye. Opposed? Did you guys hmm? <coughs> members, any other amendments? Uh, Senator Duckworth. Uh, Mr. Chair, I apologize. I, I don't have any amendments. I just have comments, if, if, if that's oh. appropriate at this time. Um, uh, okay. Absolutely. Let's do that now. Senator, uh, any uh, comments or questions about the uh, bill as amended? Senator Duckworth. Thank you. I appreciate it. I did have a litany of questions for the last one, but since Senator Kupek wasn't here, I spared you. Uh, really, just a couple of comments. <clears throat> um, the first one being on page five, when we look at subdivision three, consideration of criminal records limited. Um, I'm just still not 100% comfortable with uh, making that a requirement of, of colleges and universities. I do appreciate, however, though, on page six, the fact that there's a uh, a limitation on whether or not uh, a college or university could find themselves being sued as a result of abiding by that policy. Um, I just put my hat on as a parent, and I'm not quite 110% comfortable with telling those colleges or universities what they can't necessarily ask about in terms of a, a criminal record. But I guess I do understand that it's obviously uh, well intended. The other aspect of a bill I, I still find uh, that I take issue with is a $600 fee. Uh, that's being charged to students um, that's a new fee. I feel like in the Commerce Committee, I've heard a bunch of bills right now that talks about how we're trying to get rid of junk fees. And I know I'm sure that it's well-intentioned and it could be used for this, that, or the other, but in a day and age when student debt is through the roof and kids and families are saying college already costs too much, I'm just not 100% uh, on board with that yet. And then last but not least, uh, this one I'm still hoping that maybe Senator Fate we can make a change to at some point on page nine, uh, section seven, um, it talks about supervised released employment requirements, post-secondary education. And I'll just read uh, the sentences because it's pretty brief. 
It says that the Commissioner of Corrections imposes a requirement on a person placed on supervised release that the person work or be employed, the Commissioner shall provide that enrollment and participation in a post-secondary education satisfies this requirement. Senator Fate, I'd like to talk with you offline about uh, looking at this and maybe on line 9.23 before the word enrollment adding full-time. Um, or really some, some other parameter that is commiserate with what the ex expectation is regarding employment. Um, I think I would hate for somebody to um, get a workaround on the expectation that they have full-time employment and simply just enroll in one college class and because they met the enrollment threshold, uh, they're, be, they're satisfying that requirement. Um, maybe that's the intent, maybe it's not, so we can maybe have a conversation offline and, and shore that language up a little bit just to make sure that um, it's meeting the intent and people are, whether they're enrolled or working, are meeting the requirements that uh, we expect of them as they're transitioning back into uh, everyday life. So that's all I've got, Mr. Chair, thank you. Thank you for your comments, Senator Duckworth. Members, any other questions about the bill as amended or comments? Senator Umu Verbatim. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Thank you, um, Chair Fate, for the bill. I am really excited about it, and I'm glad that we were able to um, also hear from our students that uh, we were able to solve the FIG issue. And I just, I really want to thank you for making this such a like student-centered committee and um, really showing that their voices matter and that we made this a priority and we made it a bipartisan priority. And thank you to everyone on the committee for making sure that happened. We were able to solve that issue. Um, and I'm really excited about 4269 being in here, um, including the ban the box for um, colleges. Um, I know when we heard this in committee, we had to make sure folks knew it was indeed going to judiciary, where we continue to do some work on it that's now been reflected in the bill. Um, and I've consulted with so many stakeholders on this, including our systems, and there's a long list of supporters um, of this legislation, including violence-free Minnesota um, and uh, a number of uh, victim services organizations worked with Ramsey County's um, group that um, specializes on uh, sexual assault on campus to make sure we got that right. Um, and um, the liability language is also based on some feedback from our systems too. So I'm really excited to see that move forward. Um, and just enjoy being a part of this committee and being able to um, bring forward bills that are really going to improve the lives of our students. Thank you. Thank you, Senator Mover Bait. And Senator Rarick. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chair. And I also uh, want to start by thanking the foster advocates for being so brave and coming forward and sharing their stories over the last couple of years. And Senator Fate and Sam. Uh, for all the work you engaged in to make that happen and continue that commitment. It uh, speaks very highly of everyone here that we can work across the aisles and, and get do what's right. So thank you. And also the majority leader. I know I put her on the spot the other day in committee, and I know it was everybody working together to find the way to fix this that got it done. Thank you, Senator Eric. Members, any other questions or comments or statements? Looks like we're good. Okay. Uh, we will now vote on the underlining bill as amended. Senator, oh, yeah, do you have any closing comments? Uh, yeah, I just want to say thank you so much to the committee members that made this happen, um, the advocates and all the students for coming out and speaking. Um, Ohi, uh, Sam, Chris, everyone, uh, I want to thank you all so much and look forward to passing this to finance. Thank you. Uh, so now vote on the underlying bill as amended. Senator Fateh moves that Senate file 5326 as amended be recommended to pass and uh, re-referred to the Committee on Finance. Any discussion? All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Aye. Senate file 5326 is amended, is recommended to pass and referred to the Committee on Finance. Um, there being no further business before the committee, uh, we are adjourned.